so folks, buckle up, because what I have for you in this one is the pinnacle of epic old Donnie humiliation. And it has everything to do with him going out in public today on the steps of the courtroom and getting absolutely crushed. Yes, by media observers and real-time breakdowns of his BS, but also, most hilariously, by his own big fat mouth. So we have a bit of a supercut here. We're going to start with some reporting, then go into his meltdown, which is broken down immediately live in real second-to-second -second moments with an absolutely brutal fact check. So guys, this is really the, the the final straw for Trump. As we've been seeing, he was going to try to make the arguments himself. He was going to do his own closing arguments. The judge basically said no because he knew that uh, it was going to be a, a, a clear stunt and Trump didn't follow the regulations. But it's just also a sign, guys, that his old strategies of threats and bullying and intimidation isn't working. It's not working and Donald Trump has given up. So... Watch this every second. And again, I've lifted up the hood, give you a secret on how YouTube works. If you watch this all the way through and share it, like it, leave comments, all of that, YouTube will show my video to far right idiots and they will be forced to see the truth you already know. Well, I don't think that he's necessarily lost faith in his lawyers, Chris Kyes, of course, his longtime attorney. I think it's that he really believes that he's his best spokesman and he sees this less as a legal proceeding uh, and more of a campaign event, as John and I were just talking about. I mean, that's his real return on investment for showing up, as he has here so many times during the course of this trial, is to create drama, to frame himself as a victim and try to draw attention away from his Republican rivals. So I see it more as just him once again trying to seize the spotlight and take control of this proceeding, which he has tried to do numerous times and has been successful in the past. As we said, I do think we can count this courthouse as the 100th county in <laughs> Iowa. The Iowa caucuses are on Monday. Nothing that happens here is divorced from what's happening on the campaign trail. Ellie, unfortunately, one of the things that has happened here this morning is this bomb threat at the home of Judge Arthur and Gorin. If I'm looking behind me right now, things still do seem to be moving more slowly because of it. It is a more slow procedure, letting people into the courthouse and then into the courtroom itself. I should note, we did, we think, you see Donald Trump's motorcade leaving the Trump Tower area to head down here. It's possible they get down here before anyone else is in the courtroom. So it'll be interesting to see how the timing on all that works. But this bomb threat at the judge's house, Ellie, we've been told that it, it will not change. The proceedings are still going on. Do you think it'll have any impact? Other than delay, no, John. I think what the judge is going to want to do here is show that this kind of conduct, these threats, do not deter us. They do not take us off the tracks. We're going to do our job that we had to do. We're going to carry on. I think the judge and the entire court personnel, I'm sure, feels very strongly about that. And, John, it's worth noting, we have seen so many threats against judges, against prosecutors, against witnesses over the years that I think it all sort of blends in and becomes easy to overlook. We should never overlook this. And I really want to note, there's a line that's being crossed here. I mean, threats are never okay. They're never legal. But we've now seen sort of crossing over into the personal realm. I mean, this uh, this threat, as I understand it, was directed at the judge's home. And you don't have to think back very far, just a week or so, because Judge Chutkin, who's presiding over the criminal case in D.C., she had her home swatted, meaning a false alert was called into police officers to go to her, to get them to go to her home and cause all sorts of potential danger. So there's really a lot of lines that have been crossed here, and I think we have to call it out every time. This is not normal. This is not acceptable. It certainly is not lawful. No, it is not something that is good for the system, good for the country, good for defendants uh, or people who are charged with crimes or in civil cases like this. It just is a plain bad thing. Karen, there will be legal arguments made today. In the midst of all this drama, in the midst of a campaign, there will be legal arguments. And you can see shots of a microphone right there. One of the things we have heard is the Attorney General, Letitia James, speaking before court. I don't know if she's going to be here today. We can anticipate that, Paula, you think? Yeah, I think that's a safe bet. We have consistently seen her address uh, the media when she comes uh, to court each day and when she goes out. And look, that's, that's a little unusual uh, for someone who's overseeing a case like this, who's arguing that politics stop at my door to hold many press conferences when she comes in and out. Uh, they're, they're a little more tamped down than the Trump uh, press avails. But yes, I would expect her to address the microphones. All right. 
All right, John Berman along with CNN Chief Legal Affairs Correspondent Paula Reed. We are outside the courthouse in Lower Manhattan where closing arguments are underway in the civil fraud trial against Donald Trump where he has already been found liable for defrauding the government of millions of dollars. This trial is now about some additional counts as well as damages, potentially $370 million in damages. As we said, closing arguments underway behind us and for the first time, the judge, Arthur Ungoran, has stepped in as Donald Trump's team is presenting. That's right. Chris Kyes, Trump's lawyer, is presenting his closing argument. It's his theory of the case. And for the first time, we heard the judge stop him and correct him. And it was over whether former President Trump is truly an industry expert. Because Kyes reminded the court, as part of his closing argument, and I'm reading notes from our colleagues who are inside, that Trump is a, quote, industry expert. He said, Trump has been part of the fabric of commercial real estate in this community, in this state, and frankly, all over the world for nearly 50 years. And there, the judge stopped him and said, Trump has not been qualified as an expert in this trial. Now, this is a bit of a technicality. When you bring in an expert in a trial, they do need to be qualified. It's a process that you go through, uh, but the judge... Again, he was upset by this, so he stopped him. He corrected him, but things like this, John, get under Trump's skin. And Trump is sitting in there because this case is so personal. This is not just about his expertise and his career. This is about everything he has sold himself to be, right? A titan of industry, of commercial real estate. So it's likely that this exchange did not please uh, Kaiser's client. Oh, that's really interesting. I mean, it's a technical term. It's industry technical. expert yeah. is a legal technical term, but for Donald Trump, it's probably a term of art, right? Absolutely. And I'm sure that Donald Trump takes issue with anyone suggesting that he's not an expert. But what the judge is saying is, no, 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 you can't refer to him as an expert because he has not been qualified as an expert witness. It's a technicality, but it is a technicality about something that is so deeply personal to Trump. All right. Donald Trump's team has until 1245 to finish making its closing arguments. One thing we're waiting to see is if they try to get Donald Trump in there to speak himself. The judge has said that is not allowable under the current agreement. Will Trump's team try to sneak it in? Donald Trump. Which on intellectual interference at the highest level is a disgrace. It's in coordination with the White House and Joe Biden because he can't win a campaign fairly. And uh, we're going through it, but it is indeed a terrible witch hunt. We're going to have a news conference a little bit later on. As you know, I want to speak. I want to make this donation. Uh, at this moment, the judge is not letting me make this donation because I'll bring up things that he doesn't want to hear. And uh, it's a very unfair trial. Nobody's seen anything like this. I don't think they've ever seen anything like this. We have a situation where a statute was used that doesn't give me a jury, so I have no jury. I really have no rights, and it's uh, and nobody nobody thinks it's constitutional. People, legal scholars, are writing about it like it's something they've never seen before. So it's uh, interference. It's political interference, um, and it's something that shouldn't be allowed. So I am uh, hoping to speak and to help my lawyers reveal all of the defects of this case which should have never been brought very very strong financial statements they thought it was the opposite they had no idea because i'm a private company then they saw them knock their socks off they couldn't believe it but great financial statements uh, everything is good we have we have a level of detail in our defense that nobody's ever had this is a case that should have never been brought and it was brought and it's very unfair and it's very bad for new york state companies are fleeing People are fleeing, the streets are crime ridden, and Letitia James, that's all, all she thinks about is get Trump. She's been dreaming about it for years, and it's, you know, it's not the way a, a state should be run, because this is a state that's been in big trouble. You have all the businesses fleeing, and yet the people fleeing, the people that pay taxes, the people that don't pay taxes are coming in, so that's not what you want. So I want to thank you. We're going to have a news conference today at around, we don't know the time, we'll, we'll notify you, but sometime in the early afternoon at 40 Wall Street. So we'll give a news conference where we can actually speak and have a microphone here, because even that they don't want us to have. Uh, they really don't want us to speak too much. So we'll see whether or not the judge allows me to speak. Perhaps he won't, uh, but I certainly would like to. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. Donald Trump speaking before he now heads into closing arguments of the civil fraud trial against him. 
um, saying, repeating much of what we have heard from Donald Trump in the past going in, calling it a witch hunt, calling it election interference, and also in those remarks making it very clear once again, what is happening in the courtroom is a campaign strategy for Donald Trump at this point. John Berman, outside, John's back with us. Also joining us, Paul Reed is right there with John. Anna Navarro here with us, Essie Cup here with us as well. John, it's exactly what we've heard from Donald Trump before, going after the Attorney General, going after criticizing the judge, saying that he wanted to speak but not allowed to, and attacking the whole process and trying to incorrectly connect it to Joe Biden, what he is up against here in this New York courtroom. Yeah, I think as you said correctly, Kate, this was a political speech filled with some legal inaccuracies as he was describing what was taking place here. Paula Reed uh, was with me watching this in real time. And, and let's just talk about what those legal uh, inaccuracies were so they can jump into the political discussion after. Uh, let's start with this idea that he's alleging a conspiracy between the state attorney general and the White House. We know the New York State Attorney General, Letitia James, she has attended public events at the White House, and they are trying to misconstrue that as secret meetings to engage in a conspiracy to, quote, get Trump. Now, he's also talking about not being allowed to participate in closing arguments, and he is sort of characterizing this as a refusal by the judge. But CNN has obtained correspondence between the Trump team and the judge here. The judge was open to allowing him to take this very unusual move of participating in closing arguments, but the judge wanted some guardrails, some restrictions. And John, there's good reason for that, because what we've seen repeatedly during the course of this proceedings, Trump has attacked the judge, the district attorney, members of the mm -hmm. court staff. So the judge said, look, I'm willing to let you participate in closing arguments, but we have some restrictions. You have to focus on the material, relevant facts, and not attack your accusers. That's pretty reasonable. But his lawyer, Trump's lawyer, Chris Kyes, said this was not tenable, and the judge closed the door on this possibility. I fully expect that this issue is probably going to be relitigated at the top of these yeah, proceedings. Yeah, minutes from now. Minutes from now, I think that this is going to come up again. And then Trump, uh, again, pointing to the attorney general's campaign promise yeah. to prosecute him and trying to suggest that this is all uh, politically motivated, this civil case. So this is similar to what we've heard before with some new some new elements, yeah. the biggest being this this question of whether he'll participate in closing. And again, we're watching for that. In the next few minutes, we will know whether or not his lawyers try to sneak that back yeah. in and at least ask for Donald Trump to deliver closing arguments right here behind us. But Kate, as you can see, and as I think you just so correctly stated, there were some legal statements made there incorrectly, but it's not about the law, really. It's about the politics. It's about the campaign. And that was very obvious <clears throat> as he was walking into that court. <clears throat> 